welcome to our YouTube presentation on theories of criminal justice. Today we'll be exploring six important theories that explain why crimes happen, how justice systems should respond, and how crime can be reduced in our society. From ideas about rational choices to learning crime through peers and how society leaders affect people's future, these theories help policy scientists, law enforcers, and policy makers make better decisions. We will also be the truth for a box of session to hear what people like you think about crime and justice. So sit tight and let's get started. Let's begin with one of the oldest and influential theory, which is the Plasca theory. Cesare Beccaria, Jeremy Bentham are the originators of the Plasca theory. This explains that crime deter crimes, deter crime, and law must be clear, sweet, and proportional. The Plasca theory establishes due processes and ignores social and economic causes of crimes, which can be seen as one of the one of its weaknesses. Yes, penalty for murder or treason are examples of um, now, let all crimes can be learned through interactions and environment, and this is where the social learning theory comes in. It was propounded by Edwin Sutherland, an American sociologist, and Roland Eckert, an American criminologist. The main argument of the theory is that the crime is learned from peers, media, and family through reinforcement. The strength of the theory is that it provides an explanation as to why crime runs in families and gangs. The weakness of the theory is that it does not take impulsive crimes into consideration. An example of the theory is Youth Crime Watch of Nigeria. An anti glorification media campaign. Next, I was speaking on labeling theory. It was propounded by Howard Becker, an American sociologist, and Edwin Lamart, an American professor in sociology. The main argument of this theory is that criminal labels increases recidivism by limiting opportunities, and justice systems should stop stigmatizing offenders. What this, trying to, what this label of theory is trying to say is that no one is born a criminal, but society creates criminals by labeling certain behaviors as criminal acts. However, every theory has their weaknesses. And the weakness of this theory is that it does not depict the initial cause of crime and it is seen as soft on crime. An example of this uh, theory is expungent. Up next, we will look at how small signs of disorderliness can lead to larger crime in society. And this is captured by the broken windows theory, which was propounded by James T. Wilson and George Shelley. The main argument of this theory is that fixing small signs of disorderliness can prevent larger crimes. And the strength of this theory is that the theory provides an explanation of how urban decays can lead to crime. And the weakness of this theory is that it will lead to overpolicing of major offenses. An example of this, of the use of the broken theory, broken windows theory, the clamping down of motorcycles and labor Another perspective looks deeper into personal and societal influences. That brings us to the positive theory. And the originators are Cesare Lombroso and Emile Dokken, which makes us to understand that crime comes from biological, social, and psychological factors. The strength are the theory highlights the social and psychological roots of crime. The theory favors the addition of offenders over pure punishment. Lombroso's biological determinism is outdated, discrimination and without scientific justification, which is weakness. And examples are rehabilitation programs in correctional facilities, and power programs and social welfare policies to reduce poverty. Thank you. Finally, let's discuss a more modern and humane approach to justice, one that focuses on healing and making amends. It's the restorative justice theory. The restorative justice theory was propounded by Awotia in 1944 to date. This theory focuses on accountability of the offenders for their actions, repairing harm rather than punishment, as well as inclusive dialogue. It helps to reduce recidivism as well as empowering victims. However, this approach will not be suitable for violent crime, where the arm forced is not may not be repairable. An example of this is the, is the Lagos Restorative Justice Center, which focuses on reintegration, healing, and repairing arm. No, I don't. But I believe it's a matter of personal choice and background, and not background rather, because there is crime commitment among um, the rich ones. So, so that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, what's your opinion about giving offenders a chance to make peace with everything? Yeah, I feel like um, even offenders they need to get a chance to explain why they do it. And if there are reasons are genuine, then I feel like they should make this with the victims. If the victims are, um, they are open to making this with them.
That's right. Okay. And that brings us to the end of our presentation on the theories of criminal justice. As we've seen, each theory has its strengths and weaknesses. Some focus on punishment, why others emphasize why others emphasize rehabilitation, societal influences, and repairing arms. Forensic scientists and criminal justice professionals must understand these theories to investigate crimes, interpret evidences, and ensure justice is fair and effective. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed.